1. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 3, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of mercies, notice this next phrase, and the God of all what? Comfort. Who comforteth us in what? All our tribulation. That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation um, and salvation, which is effectual. Get this now. He says it's effectual um, in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Now I want to read one other verse to you from Acts chapter 20. You don't need to turn there, but Acts chapter 20 and verse 35, the scripture says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, here it is, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I want to take these verses this morning, and I want to help you out this morning. I want to talk to you about this topic, God's Intensive Care Unit. God's Intensive Care Unit. Father, take these next few minutes and allow me to be a help to your people. I, re I recall how early in the morning, as I was reading this passage of Scripture, how it was an encouragement to me and one little thought that, you, that jumped out at me that, we've met, that we often miss about your comfort. God, I want to be, I, I so badly want to help people. There's people here this morning carrying a heavy burden. Lord, I am simply a tool. I'm simply a conduit to try to help these people. I pray today they would receive that comfort that they so desperately need. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I am constantly reminded of people who are hurting. My phone throughout the week, I receive text, I receive phone calls of people who say, Preacher, I am going through, and they tell me what they're going through. They need comfort. Yeah, right. They need help. Yeah. They're going through tough times. We live in days that are tough days. We live in days that, that really, truthfully, we tend to be people that we, we are constantly bombarded, get this now, by the hurts of the world. Everyone sitting down, sitting down now and help me out if you can. Now understand this, we are bombarded, we need the comfort of God. Now get this now, it is not my comfort to give, it is God's comfort to give. God's the God of all what? All comfort. So God's the one that gives me the comfort. When someone passes away, I can try to comfort you, but I cannot comfort you, but I know the God God who can comfort you. Um, when someone's in a hospital room and they're going through the struggle of health, I wish I sometimes I go to the hospitals, Brother Hopkins and I, I really wish I had the words to tell people. And sometimes I walk out of that hospital room feeling like I have not done what they need me to do, but I can't do it. But I know the God who can do it, and that's the God that I must rely on to give people that comfort that they're going through. There are widows that are going through times of loneliness. There are parents who are, who are, are seeing, uh, single parents that are trying to raise their children alone, going through times that they need comfort. There's a spouse that they lose their spouse because of unfaithfulness, and now they have to deal with the hurt. And here we are trying to comfort, trying to help. It's a parent who has a child that just went to jail. It's a, it's a child has a parent that just got incarcerated. It's a wife who goes through hard times, and we wonder, how do we handle Handle these comforts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've lately been in the intensive care room, not me personally for myself, but for others. Yeah. I go to the hospitals. I walk into the intensive care room, and I'm always aware of one thing. There's some nurses there that are 
trying to make, yes, they're trying to bring life and health back to that patient. But they're also trying to keep them comfortable. I watched the nurses come inside of, a, of someone laying in a hospital bed to make sure they don't get bed sores. And they move them around a little bit so that those bed sores don't become another source of infection. I watched those nurses labor trying to help that patient right there to feel better. Right. The patient already doesn't want to be there. I mean, who wants to be in a hospital? Who wants tubes in your nose? Who wants something down your mouth? Who wants to have um, somebody poke you with IVs and have several IVs coming into your arm? Who wants that? But that nurse is there, and that nurse, in a tender way, tries to comfort that patient right there, and, say, and they'll try to do the right things to make sure that patient is getting the help that they need. It is that intensive care that that nurse does to try to help that patient. Now follow me very carefully. This is what's interesting to me. That nurse in the ICU cares for the people. Now how do they get this knowledge? They went to training. They got the training, but get this now. The training was not for the nurse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The training was for them to take the knowledge of the education to comfort the patient. That's right. Yeah. They're simply taking knowledge to help somebody else be more comfortable. Can I tell you, that's what God says comfort is. When we read our text verse from Corinthians, it's interesting that Paul says, he says it is for, he says where he says we, we, whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation. He says the tribulation and the trials that I go through, he says, I don't go through them. I don't get comfort, get this, by what I, by what I receive, but I get comfort by how I help others. Right. He says the comfort that I get is going out, taking the help of God and saying, let let me help somebody else. Now you say, preacher, what is comfort? I like to, I give you several definitions of comfort. Comfort's the air conditioner on a hot day. Yeah. 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 Right. Hey. You know, Oklahoma, hey, we, we've been complaining about wintertime. Summertime's coming. It's about ready to hit those triple digits come, come July. And all the, all the cold weather that we don't like right now, people are going to start griping. Well, I want some cold weather. I want some cold weather. And they're going, I want it to cool down. You know how you cool down? You go and get in front of that air conditioner. You turn that air conditioner on. You get in front of the air conditioner, and you get comfort from the air conditioner. Now, does the air conditioner take the heat of the day from the outside away? No. It just allows you to be what? Comfortable in the heat of the day. Have you ever had your mama, you hurt yourself, and uh, that little child comes crying in, and they've got the little boo-boo right there, and the blood's running down their, down their um, arm or down their knee right there, and mama takes that little child, and she, as tenderly as she can without trying to hurt the child, that child sits there, and they, mama will gently wipe the dirt off, and then she'll get some peroxide, and she'll put that peroxide on, on that, on that, on that little knee right there, and that and that child begins to cry a little. Mama says it's okay, gonna make you better, gonna make you better. Then Mama gets maybe some Neosporin ointment and put it on that boo boo right there, and puts a little band aid over the back. And then Mama says, "Isn't everything?" Okay? Mama says, "Let me hold you. Right. Let me hold you." Right. What's Mama doing? Does it take the wound away? No, but it gives you comfort right. as you're going through it. Yep. You see, that's what comfort is. God does not say, get this now. God does not say he, get, he takes the sores that, 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 that creates the need for comfort away. But he says the comfort I give you gives you the wherewithal to be able to handle that hard time, handle that trial, make it through that trial, be on top side of that trial. God says that's what my comfort does for you. Amen. Now get this now. So what God's saying is, he's saying comfort is not needed unless you have hard times. Yeah. Unless you have tribulation. Unless you have 
troubles, unless you have suffering, unless you have affliction, there's no need for comfort. Now get this now. Now God says once the tribulation comes, once the suffering comes, once the affliction comes, God says I do have comfort for you. Let me give you several observations and then I want to give you the truth I want you to see. You will go through hurts in life. You will. Anybody that's an adult will say, I've experienced hurts in life. We don't like it, but the hurt's there. We don't like, I mean, I could, I could start in this section right here, and I could start looking at people. And I could tell you, every person as I go across this auditorium right here, and I see people that I know that are experienced hurt inside of life. And can I tell you, we're going to have hurt inside of life. But thank God, isn't there an air conditioner for the hurt? Isn't it wonderful to have a Band-Aid for the hurt? Isn't it wonderful to have the hands of God for the hurt to help us through that time of hurt? Why? Hey, everybody's going to have hurt inside of life. Can I say uh, observation number two, you will need comfort someday. Some of you right now say, I don't need this right now. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, you're going to need it someday. I, I see those who like to criticize those who are going through hard times. I think I'd hold my criticism until your hard time comes. Once you've gone through the hard times, then you can then you can um, you can understand what others are going through. Okay, let me illustrate. I'm always amazed how pe- how parents, okay, with adolescents, have all the child rearing knowledge for all those who have teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. That, if, that adolescent's going to do what you tell them to do. Yeah. Yeah. But get this now, you all of a sudden you get a teenager. That teenager gets their own mind. That teenager starts telling you what to do, and they think they can take control of the of the of the of the house. Now let me tell you something. I'm saying all I'm saying is you're going to need comfort someday. Observation number three: comfort is not an asset that you hold. Comfort is not an asset that you hold. So follow me very carefully, um, Brother Hall. Grab a songbook. So we're gonna, so God does not give me comfort to hold it. Amen. Right. God doesn't say, let me give you comfort because you get this now. This comfort, don't sit down. <laughs> God doesn't give you this because this comfort that you hold can become a source of bitterness if you don't take the comfort that God gives you to use it for the purpose that he wants you to have. Amen. Amen. So, God does not give thee comfort to hold. Follow me very carefully. You can be seated for a second. God gives me comfort from another, but the purpose of receiving the comfort is so that I can comfort others. Listen, here's God's, okay, here's God's comfort model. Get, Get this. Hurt, I receive comfort from another. Another hurts, I give them my comfort, then God gives me more comfort. You with me so far? So follow me very carefully. Come here and um, um, come here. And so get this now. So hurt comes. You say, who's hurt? Son-in-law. <laughs> Just see if you're awake out there. And he, so God gives me comfort. Now get this now. So I receive comfort. Then another's hurt. So I take this comfort and I say, this help me, let me give it to you. Right. Get this now. And so when God gives, when I give that to him, he, God gives me more comfort. You're with me so far. Amen. So the purpose of comfort is not for me to hold and to say, this is mine. I don't care what you're going through. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose of this comfort is I find somebody else who's hurting. And so let me tell you how I made it through in this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. That's true comfort. That's what God wants us to understand. It's not about me having and holding. It's about me getting so I can give to someone else because it is more blessed to what? Give than to receive. Thank you, me. You can be seated for a little bit. So all it takes, I want you to follow me carefully. All it takes for comfort to stop is for one person to stop giving it to another. That's it. Right. Yep. That's right. Amen. That's all it takes. Yeah. 
So, I like this. Okay, come on. Come on. Get up here. And get up here. Get up here. So, I want you all to, I want you all just to get, get, just surround me in the pulpit. Just you stay, just stay in a circle. Just, I need some, I need a couple of guys down there. There you are. There you are. There you go. That's good. That's good. Now, you got the comfort? So, get over here on this side. So, God gives me comfort. I take that comfort, I give to him. Now, why does God give him comfort? Because he sees somebody else hurting to give him comfort. So he sees somebody else hurting to give him comfort. And he sees somebody else hurting to give him comfort. And then he gives to him. Now, all it takes for this comfort to stop for me, say, nope. Yep, that's it. Right? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Nope. Yeah. Yep. Give it to me. That's all I want. I want it. It's mine. Yeah. yeah. Not going to give it to anyone else. Right. I don't care. I have the help that can help people, but I'm not going to help anybody. Going to keep it for myself. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. That's good. You see, this is society right now. Society wonders, well, I need comfort. Well, you stopped comforting someone else. You tried to keep it yourself, and that's why you struggle inside of the problems that you have inside of life because you're living to get instead of living to help somebody else. Amen. That's right, amen. That's good. Thank you, men. But here's where the truth comes in. This is where I got excited. <laughs> Trying to keep you awake. <laughs> the blessing does not come in receiving this comfort. The blessing comes in finding somebody That's right, yeah. and comforting them. Right. That's where true comfort comes comes from. That's where the complete package of comfort comes from. The complete, God, get this now, people get partial of the package of comfort, but God says the whole package comes by you taking God's comfort and giving it to someone else. That's where the true package of comfort comes from. Amen. Right. Get this now, if I hold this, then I am only getting partial of the package, but the true package comes from me giving to someone else, and then I totally understand what the reason why I go through the hard times is, is so I can be an encouragement to others. Amen. In reality, I'm to be a conduit from God to others. Do you know who gets the most out of my sermons? Me. You know why I get the most? Because I get from God and then I give to others their help, and I receive the joy of seeing the smile on their face. I see the joy of their life being put back together. I see the joy of their families coming back together. I see the joy of the children growing up, and that's where the joy comes from. Amen. Yes, sir. Too many people come on Sunday morning and they say, give me, give me, give me. And all they want is to give. Then they go home and say, well, it doesn't work. The reason why it's not working, because you're not giving it to somebody else. Right. Amen. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Amen. That's right. Thank you, man. You can be seated. That's good. So how do I get comfort? What do I do with comfort? Let me help you out. One, take your eyes off yourself. Amen. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Take your eyes off yourself. Right. Nobody's helping me. Of course not. Because you don't need it. Because you've not invested your life in helping others. Listen, husband, if you would learn to start meeting the needs of your wife, you might find that that comfort will come around and your needs will be met. Listen, ma'am, hey, you might find the comfort in your marriage that you're looking for if you would meet your husband's needs and say, well, he just never thinks of me. He's always about him. You always think you're the issue right here. Let me tell you something. You get that mindset. I'm telling you right now, your marriage will go down the drain. It's not about what my spouse can give to me. It is about me trying to meet their needs as I meet their needs. Get this now. God makes her. My needs are met. My joy does not come from what others can do for me. My joy comes from what I can do for them. Amen. 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 That's right. yep. How do I comfort? I said, one, take your eyes off yourself. Second, pray. Right. Yeah. Pray. Amen. Amen. 
So what do you pray? Here's my prayer every day. Lord, lead me across the path of someone I can help today. Amen. Yeah. My wife can attest to you that is the last prayer I pray before I walk out of the house. My wife and I, every morning before I walk out of the door of the house, we have a simple prayer to time of prayer together. And my last statement in the prayer is, Lord, lead me across the path of someone that I can help if he's in my shoes today. Amen. Just lead me across the path of somebody. Which leads me to statement number three. How can I comfort? Look for someone you can help. Look for someone you can help. So what do I do? I spend my day trying to find somebody I can help. I spend my day trying to find somebody who's down. And I try to put a smile on my face. And I say, hey, how you doing today? Try to make them happy. Try to make them laugh. Try to comfort them. Instead of walking around griping and complaining, hey, I find somebody who's having a bad day. And I say, I wonder if somehow I can make them happy. I wonder if I can make this Yankee right here to have a smile on his face. Amen. Says he really a Yankee? He's full-blooded. <laughs> hey, I wonder if I can help this Gator fan right there. No, right, that right there. Yeah, you go. I wonder if I can encourage him. I wonder if I can make him happy. His team loses every year. I wonder if I can make him happy. I mean, how do you help a little? But anyway, I find somebody whose wife is struggling with her health. Let me tell you something. One thing I incur, I love about this man. They are, he and his wife are going through some, some pretty heavy days right now. But you see a smile on his face. You see the joy in his soul. And some of us, we like getting around Brother Williams because he encourages us. And let me tell you why. Because he's not griping through life. Well, what's God doing to me? Amen. Amen. He has a smile on his face despite the struggles that they face. And he encourages us. Amen. But you know who gets the greatest encouragement brother williams yeah. brother williams right. i watch mrs williams back there she struggles with her health and i see her she doesn't gripe she doesn't complain she just says i want to do my best with what i have and yet you've got healthy people griping complain well, i got a little hang now she's got health issues that many don't understand and yet she's still trying to be a help to others amen. Amen. Yep. that's right Who is that? yeah amen it's good you know why you like being around him? Because he found the true secret of comfort yeah. comes from giving others encouragement. Yeah. 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 Now, instead of you being Eeyore every day, yeah. Come on. Yeah. instead of you griping about everything going on in your life, why don't you try to become that one that encourages others? Why don't you try to, hey, teenager, instead of making life about you and making your home a place that nobody wants to be around, hey, teenager, why don't you say, I'm going to do my best to be the one inside the home that makes home a happier place. There's some homes, it's time for daddy to come home, and everybody says, oh, boy, brace yourself, daddy's coming home. Yeah. yeah. There's some homes, the wife is coming home, and everybody says, hey, watch out. If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Yeah. Everybody, be careful. Walk on the eggshells. You don't want to make mom unhappy. Yeah. Come on. Right. Ought not to be that way. Yeah. Right. It ought to be that when mama comes home, oh, I can't wait to see the smile on mama's face. I know she's tired, and she's worked hard through the day, and boy, I, I, I love my mama that she loves me enough to come and still make me a meal. Hey! She comforts me. Why? So I can comfort someone else. Amen. Get off your emoji campaign on social media. And make your life about trying to make somebody happy every day. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will what? Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. There's something about this day that everybody can find and say, Woo! Hey! Thank God Amen. that there's a God that's giving me something good today. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Encourage. Amen. Encourage. Instead of using your texting to attack, yeah. 
why don't you use texting to text somebody who's having a tough day and say, I'm praying for you. Amen. Thought about you, praying for you. Amen. Thought about you, praying for you. Amen. Two preachers today that I know in the country are going for a big day. I texted one of them yesterday, one today. I said, I hope God gives you a good day. Hope you have the number you're going for. Amen. They're probably shocked that somebody even think about it because most of the time someone's going for a big day. They're trying to shoot them down. I want them to be encouraged. I hope they have a big day. You say, why? Souls will get saved. People won't go to hell. I hope they do have a big day. Amen. So use it. Hey, instead of using the texting as a weapon to get at, as a drive-by weapon to get at somebody, use that text to encourage someone. Amen. Yes, sir. Hey, that's good. Amen. That's right. I don't tell Brother Wilkie what I think. <laughs> Michigan fans don't go to heaven. You know where that means you're going. Yeah. Come on now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you fans. <laughs> you know what that means? You owe me. I like Brother Williams. Roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs> Don't you do that. I'll text you one too. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like a bunch of little kids with our texting. Our fingers have become weapons from, from the source of a phone and we, we destroy and we put daggers instead of trying to help people. That's right. Come on. Yeah. That's you know, one of the things I enjoy about social media, this is my favorite thing I love about social media. Ready? Block. <laughs> I love blocking people. You say, who do you block? People that are going to take my spirit and try to bring it down to the ground. Not interesting. You say, well, well you, you, just, you, you have thin skin. No, there's too many people I need to help for me to read your junk. Uh, that's right. My mama used to say, if you don't have anything good to say, what? Don't say anything at all. She said, why are you so quiet, preacher? Because I don't have anything good to say. I've just learned sometimes the best thing to say is nothing. Sometimes, hey, someone's going through a tough time. I may not know what to say, but I go there and I say, let me just, let me just sit with you for a while. Just me. I don't, you say, what are you saying? I don't know. I'm not doing it. I just want you to know I'm here. Brother Davis was in the hospital recently. I hate hospitals, by the way. You say, why? They take blood. I don't like needles. I pass out the sight of blood. I went in his room. You say, why'd you go there? Because he needed comfort from the pastor. Yeah. Right. yeah. Say, do you enjoy going to the hospital? No. Well, why do you go? Because I want to be a help to them. Right. He's going through hard times. Yeah. Say, how do you know? Well, look who he's met. But anyway, but, but. <laughs> that's what he told me to say. But anyway. <laughs> Get this now. Oh, Brother Dickerson, I wish. I wish Christians would become Christians once again. Yeah. Yeah. Where we stop trying to jab and cut and beat up and trying to hurt somebody and be that comfort that says, I receive so I can give because the greatest joy comes in trying to help others. Amen. That's, right. Amen. That's it. Yeah. Well, hold on. You can't help others if you don't have the comforter living inside. That's where comfort comes from. Well, who's the comfort preacher? The Holy Spirit. Well, how do you get the Holy Spirit inside? Get saved. Except Jesus Christ is your Savior. So the, get this now. So the very second that I ask Christ to be my personal Savior, get this now. The comfort moves inside. Yeah. He's the one who guides us into all truth. 
He's the one who shows me what to say in the time of need. He's the one who shows me how to act in every situation. He's the one who tells me, open your mouth, shut your mouth. He says, this is how you can be the greatest source of comfort. How do you get that? He's on the inside. I listen to the Holy Spirit and I say, God, would you lead me across the path of someone I can help today? Then I listen to that voice of the Holy Spirit and I try to help them. He say, how do you do that? Oh, I'll tell you exactly how I do that. I just try to be a comfort to somebody. A joy. This week I was out soul winning and actually following up on people and I was at a place and talking to somebody and man I saw someone going across the lawn giving her husband the what to. She was saying every kind of word she could say. And I said Mrs. Basie you ought not to say that about Brother Dorian. She walked inside the house. I walked over to that man after I was done talking to the person. I said, can I talk to you a little bit? And he said, sure. I began to talk to him, gave him the gospel, got saved. Amen. Amen. Went by last night to try to talk to him. The wife saw me. She goes, my husband told me about you. He said that you was a great help to him. Amen. Thank you. How? Voice of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. On the inside, so that guy's just having a tough day. Yeah. They just need somebody to encourage him. I don't know who's guilty, him or her. Probably both. But I can at least help one. Right. Oh, I wish. He said, how'd you do that? Well, back in June 21st, 1973, I asked Christ to be my Savior. He moved, the Holy Spirit moved inside. Now I have the resource inside of me that I received the comfort to give to others. So follow me very carefully. Come here, man. Get back to where you were. God gives me comfort to find somebody else's hurting to give him comfort. To give to somebody else who's hurting to give him comfort. To give to somebody else to give him comfort. To give to somebody else to give him comfort. To give somebody else to give him comfort. And if we just keep the chain going, yeah. we all get comfort. Yeah. Yeah. But when one gets selfish and goes and sits on his chair with the comfort, it stops. Yeah. And then all these people Go without comfort. You hurting? Yeah, you hurting? Hurting? Yeah, I'm too. Well, I wish somebody would give me that comfort. God started the chain. But somebody got selfish. Somebody said, I'm not going to serve God. I'm not going to help others. I'm just going to take that comfort for me. Then they become bitter and angry. When they, what they should have done. Keep on giving comfort. Go ahead. Hey. Amen. That's good. Just keep on giving it. Yeah. Don't be the break in the chain. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just keep on right. and help them. Yes, you just be that comfort. Yeah. Hey. I like to end my thank you, men. You can go be seated. I like to end my podcast every day. And I say be good to everyone. Everyone's having a tough time. Yeah. Amen. Everybody's having a tough time. And I'm telling you right now, this whole world is having a tough time, are they not? There's some in this room having a tough time. Well, why don't you make it your job this week? I'm going to be the comfort bearer inside the home. I'm not going to keep it for myself. Yeah. I'm going to pass it to others. Because when I got saved, it started with God giving me the comforter, the source of all comfort, so I could comfort anybody whose path I come across. So I'm not going to waste the Holy Spirit's comfort inside of me. I'm going to use it. Because it's an endless source. Father, A simple truth. 
Yet, Lord, I think of comfort. You give it to me. Not for me to hold the greatest, the whole package, the intensive care that comes by me giving to others. You now can meet my needs better. God help us today. There's some in here. They are the ones, they're the source of the grief. They need to get that right. But then there's others in here. They received the comfort, but they've not given it to others. May we become your conduit.